Hello, another video, but this time I'm going to be doing more rather than talking about it. What I'm going to be doing in this one is crimping heavy duty terminals using the thick cable you've seen in my previous videos. Tools there are basically all you need. Uh, I was looking on the auction site eBay for crimping tools on this particular job and you're looking about 20 odd quid just for the particular crimping tools but the things I've here I've had lying around in my toolbox all you need is those uh, big pliers you've got some mole grips the actual crimping the standing knife simply uh, calling, uh, stripping off the uh, insulation and some wire wool to clean the inside of the terminals and the steel ruler which just gives you a rough idea how, about how much to strip back but really it's it's all done by eye you know you you know roughly how much you need so let's get to it I'm gonna be doing most of this job on the floor because this is where I find it easiest uh, here I've got the negative and this is the end of that's going to be going into the Anderson uh, connector this cable is going to be cut in half the end result will be something looking like this so let's get cracking so what we need to do is work out how much you need to cut back the insulation about so you come up to back the dome there use your Stanley knife if you push straight in you can feel the change when it's hitting the copper it won't cause too much damage to the copper inside and what you want to do is best really is not to touch the actual copper cable inside so as I pull the insulation away I give it a twist and that just braids the cable together before you put this terminal you slide this into there it's a good idea to give it a good clean inside using some wire wool Okay, just me and that one up, nice and snug, right up to there, get your mole grip there, you want to kind of adjust it using half turns until you get the grip just right to crimp it up the first time. Do this a couple of times. Slightly tighter each time. And there go. It does take a bit of doing. But once you've got there, do it a bit of a test. Tug. See, that's a bit loose, so I'm going to slightly crimp up a bit more. Another test. Spot on. Okay, so now we've got both the terminals there. They're both solid as anything. We want to be cutting this cable in half pretty much equal. I was quite surprised that these did the job because these are simple um, twin the side cutters but uh, they actually work quite well. Give that a go. There we go. So quite a smooth cut. Right, both very similar in length which is the end goal and now what I'm going to be doing is trimming these back and putting on some ring terminals like this so you only need about this much use Stanley knife once again cut back the insulation bring your grips up this time right down the middle just 
slow and steady, tighten up each time as you're gripping. And don't forget, if you come to the end, you can always use the front and back of the jaws of the grips. So, it doesn't have to be perfect looking because all this will be covered using heat shrink tubing a little later on. But, like I say, very straightforward. That job's solid as anything, going nowhere. Yeah. And there you go. So to get this Anderson terminal into the, the housing, first things first is just give it a clean up with some wire wool. So you get quite a nice finish and then get ready just to push it in. So it's really straightforward in these, you simply little nugging, pointing up there, it gets pushed into the unit. There we go, all the way and it locks into place. And that's, that's all she wrote. Using the same technique I just did with those Anderson connectors and the thinner cable, I'm going to be making quite a number of these um, short cables to connect the batteries up in parallel. I've got all the negative ones done. I'm going to be doing the positive now with this red orange cable here. These are 20 centimetres long or about 8 inches, which gives enough space in between the batteries. So, in the future, if I choose to change the batteries to different type or different style, there is enough space in between. You can have ones with different spacing of terminals. So, the 20 centimetre mark was about the right I felt. So to basically to do these I find it easiest is to strip one end, put a terminal on, then cut and then do the terminal there rather than having one small piece of cable and trying to fiddle about putting a terminal on both ends. Okay. Because of the thickness of the cable, it needs to be cut both two ways, so 20 centimetres. About there, it needs to cut half and half because of the thickness. Not one half there. Two half, and then just a bit of remainder insulation. Okay, so cleanish cut, but um, not bad at all for considering the thickness of the cable. Same again. So try and get the cable straight before you start crimping. You want both these terminals facing the same way. Because once you've crimp, crimped them, it's very difficult to get them twisted around. Get your mole grips. Okay, so there you go. The only difference with this one to that one is I've got some heat shrink tubing just there. I've not decided yet if I'm going to be putting the black tubing onto the live cables. Um, I don't think when I ordered it, red was available. It's basically this stuff, trim it down, use a a heat source, heat gun or something, and it just shrinks and absorbs around there. Straightforward. What I can show you guys now is how to use heat shrink tubing on terminals like this. This is the one of the main cables that's going to be carrying all the current through to the inverter. So you get a pair of scissors, simply trim it to the size that you want, which I'm going to be using about this much here. Okay, put it over the joint, 
and you rest it to roughly where you want. I've got a heat gun here, just put it on its lowest setting once I've got it switched on, hang on. Okay. Low setting. Just should slowly work the heat shrink tubing around. Just leaves a nice clean joint and it just looks significantly smarter. So there's one before and one after. Just the final pieces now. Put this on here like so. There we go. Wash her on. Just one last look at the main connection to and into the back of the inverter. I'm going to tighten up this nut and bolt there and then fix the heat shrink tubing around it. Now for the last bit, one in there, two, engage power, perfect, I'll uh, catch you later.